So festive greetings, this is Shukuro TV. Today is the 26th of December 2015. I wish you all a very, very happy festive period. I don't really care what you're celebrating because there's so many things to celebrate around this period. There's no point trying to pinpoint them all. So happy everything, happy oneness, and welcome to our Hukuro webinar. Today we have very special Kim Louise from Australia. Hey Kim, how you doing? Hi, good, thank you. I miss you. <laughs> so, we are also joined today by our co-hosts, lovely Guru Dan and Roxanne Swainhart. So they will be helping out today with the administration. And we also have some beautiful people that have joined us today on this special day. So. Thank you to Stephen, to Sher, to Rainbow, to Michelle, to Johannes, and also to Angela, and also to everybody else who's watching on YouTube and all that shizzle as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Dan today and allow our two co-hosts to express themselves. So happy festive period, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you, Thank Rowie. You, <laughs> Hi, Kim. Hi, Dan. <laughs> are you uh, are you feeling like perky, ready to go? I am. I am. Um, what Alma Talk won't be joining us today, I don't think, unless he pops in a bit later. Um, but there is someone that you're familiar with that is coming to drop by and say hello, um, particularly because of the timing of the year. Okay. So, everybody is ready and welcome. Thank you everyone for being here as always. Um, I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and you're enjoying your holidays. Um, Jim, you too are included in that. We all wish you a wonderful time. Um, so yeah, I will uh, take off. Um, have a great time everyone. And I will see you all very soon. So big kisses. Mwah. Um, when I bring them through, you'll know why I blew you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. I'll speak to you soon. Blessings. Blessings. Everyone, this is Endu. Hello, my friends. Hello, Endu. We have a full house today. Wonderful. Hello, full house. <laughs> How are you doing today? Are you well? Yes, very well, thank you. Awesome. We've been enjoying ourselves along with yourselves on the earth. We understand that you have a special message for us today. There's a little bit of a message, yes. All right, whenever you I are ready. Like you, yes, I, I would simply like you to do some reflection. It is a time of coming to the end of your cycle, one that you all celebrate. But I would like you deliberately to take some time to do some reflection. Now, this reflection, I would ask it to be about your interactions with each other with those you love, with those you know, with the person at what you call your local shop. Reflect upon these, please. Times when you were kind. Times when you felt very good about yourself. Times when you actually reached out to another, gave a smile and made that person stay. Times when you looked to the one that you love. And you said, sincerely, I love you. Your children, times when you gave them time, all the gifts, the blessings that humans have to give each other, please reflect upon those. It has been an awkward period. 
for many of you, there's been challenges. We understand this. These energies that appear to come from external places and how to deal with them. It can be very difficult. But if you choose reflection and you look to your past and you can find places and times that were similar where you gave perhaps a response that changed the entire conversation you are having, the entire thought pattern and the entire intention. These are the wonders. These are the wonders of your past, of what you call your 2015 that I want you to think about. I want you to find the ways that bring you joy and bring you love and bring you peace. It has been a challenging time. And many of you have felt that you are just going around in circles. There has been difficulties. There has been times where your hands have felt what you are called tied. This is understandable. You are not alone. These are stages. There are stages that do pass. Now, there is a way to deal with these stages. I will tell you, prepare yourselves. 2016 will be as if one of what you call your rubber bands will be flicked hard and fast across the room, across your universe. You will ricochet out of the stillness. Be prepared. This is why I say to you, please reflect on the relationships, your romances, in 2015 because in 2016 there is movement to come and it will appear to come what you call out of the blue. Now when this happens it becomes even more important to look back at in your case your 2015 Look at the lesson area. Look at how you handle different situations. How often did you make love? These ideas are going to be things that you are going to be dealing with in 2016. Your intimate relationships, the closest ones to you, the ones you love. And please take note. Please. Take note of the ones who love you. The ones who love you are giving you the best that they can be and I want you to understand you deserve it. Acknowledge that you are loved also by the greatness of another being, including ourselves, including those of Gurkvik Nia, including your spirit realm, including everyone. The multiverse... All you can imagine, your angels, all the creations that humans have made, they all have love for each of you. So as you go into 2016 and you suddenly find that things are moving very quickly, relationships will change. They will change shape. They will change the way you interact. Codependent ones will twist. They will be challenged. These are the times, as I said, I want you to look back at what you learned while things were more still in 2015. I would ask you to less knee-jerk react. Have less reflex response. Please keep your mind current. Keep your mind in the present. Keep it connected to your heart. Be thoughtful before you respond and be thoughtful before you project. This will eliminate any damage that may be caused. There will be a tendency to become tiny little islands. You will actually look to spend time in your own company. 
Now that in itself is not such a bad idea. Especially when you've just had an interaction with one that was not what you would have liked. Remove. Remove yourself. Reflect. How could you have changed it? And how are you going to correct it? Mistakes. What you call mistakes in your relationships. The demeanor with which you hold yourselves at times. The emotions that you feel. They're not always positive, no. Why should they be? There's much learning to be done. This is why you are here. You know that. But when you have the lesson, when the lesson is presented to you, please look at it. If you create the same situation two, three, four, five times, the ricochet is going to flick right back at you, my friends. We don't want this. We want you to look to each other and look inside yourself and think, what could I have said differently? What tone of voice could I have used? How could I have responded better? And then, and then, please, we do not want damage in 2016. We do not want damage to the populace. We want unification, as always. This is the goal, unification. There will be more challenges. This is all. It is not challenges that you are not able to deal with, that you are not able to heal. So in those quieter moments, look to your 2015, look to the interaction you have just had and make a firm decision and honour yourself with your own word that you're going to respond in future in such a way and then please return and correct it. Do not leave things undone. Please make peace. Make peace for yourself. It's very important. In 2016, where you find yourself unwittingly ricocheted, you will need to draw on these experiences. You will need to draw on the ability to look at yourself and your relationships. There will be obviously other external issues. The core issues will be amongst your relationships and the relatability to each other. So I want you to hold each other in high esteem. And those of you particularly involved in romance and the wonder of your lover and the amazement and the awe in which you watch them. I want you, to those of you who are in relationships, I will ask you, I will challenge you, please fall in love all over again with your partner. Make a concerted effort. Rebuild it and let it wash over yourself and your partner. Do this repeatedly. Find ways to fall in love. Now you may fall in love with yourself. This is very precious also. As long as you are not falling in love with your ego, as long as you are not falling in love with things that do not serve you, to keep you at a distance from others. That is not the goal. This year is about you learning how to love each other for who and what you are and how to communicate, how to repair, how to re-correct. So this is my message to start with for you. As you move through 2016, my friends, hold on tight. Hold on tight. Hold on to each other's hearts. Hold them as if they are made of fragile glass. Treat each other gently, kindly, and yourselves gently, kindly. Everyone, everything gently, kindly. Make the planet a gentle, kind place. Spread your love to strangers. This too is important. What you call random acts of kindness. They will be appreciated. They may be something that you do on a regular basis. But in the year coming, 
they will actually be appreciated far more than you could possibly know. So please continue to do it, continue to give, decide where you will be unconditional, make agreements when you can't be and move on with love, greatness, honour and humility and with romance. In romance you shall find fantasy, in fantasy you shall find pleasure. This is a cycle that I would say to you, yes. Spend your playful time here, most definitely. Your romance and your ability, the spectrum of your emotions, in your purest moments of intimate love, they are amazing. Honour them. This too, widen your spectrum with your ideas of love making also. Be true to yourselves, be true to your bodies, be true your energies. Become one with another. It will bring you magic. It will bring you lingering days of pleasure. Everything is going to be emphasized. So please my friends, for me, for my fellow species on this ship, we will be supporting you in your romance in your love and in your relationships. That is my message. Is Wonderful. I don't know. Everybody's being kind of quiet. Um, what about the people? Why. What about the persons who are waiting for a relationship to come to them? Do you have some news uh, for them? Do there is there something uh, you can let these people know? Yes, most definitely. If you are looking, what you humans say, they are looking for love. The truth is, love is all around them. It's the kind of love they're looking for. If they want romantic love, then obviously they have to put out that intention. Once that intention has been put out, if it has been reciprocated, wonderful, celebrate. If it has not, be graceful and move to another. There are so many of you on the planet, so many as you say fish in the sea for the ladies and the men and as you come also in this following year to balance out your masculine and your feminine within yourselves and also it will be predominant between each other. So your feminine will become more feminine, your masculine will become more masculine, therefore the attraction, because of the biology that you are made up of, the attraction becomes more traditional. It becomes as if the hero and the heroine, whichever way you wish to play it, it can be as romantic as you wish to make it. So for those of you who are in waiting, see yourselves with grace in waiting for your own creation to come your way. Now in here of course you may enroll the manifestation techniques. It will be effective but for some of you the idea around not being in a relationship in 2016 is the way it is meant to be for you. Now this may sound saddening. I ask you not to feel that way. I ask you to allow yourself to remain positive. Remain in a position where you are projecting wealth. Give yourself time to project it. And then there is a key. You must be open to receiving it. If you are continually projecting your desires, how are you ever going to see where it is being reciprocated? Will you feel it? Not if you're too busy putting it out there. You have to be ready for it to come back to you also. This is a two-way thing. Quite complicated, of course. You all know that. 
Humans are very good at relationships or they are terrible. But you are always learning. So simply, if 2016 is a year that you don't even feel romance is part of your reality, you don't need to focus on it. And those of you who do, then yes, go ahead, make the effort. There are many ways to make the effort. You have abundant choices in this period of your time. You all know. I would say to you all, be careful, look, give out the message and listen for the one in return. Look for resonance. Look for resonance. Do not jump into something that on the surface appears wonderful. Take it slowly. Use your ideas about communication. How can you correct? Have fun with it. If you are looking for a new relationship and you are doing it, for example, as most of you probably would on the internet, I would tell you to play. Be playful. Enjoy it. The wonder of human love and romance. The way you seduce each other. Even by the mind, by the word, by the touch. It's magic. Be playful, my friends. You are gifted. So as you go through 2016, and if you wish to go in search of a love, enjoy it. Enjoy lifting the vibration of others. Enjoy lifting the mood of someone you barely know. Perhaps you have not even laid eyes upon. Elevate them. This will make you feel good about you. Play with this. Come up with ideas. Your spirit realm will communicate with you here. Come up with these ideas. How may you write a story about yourself to entice others? Interesting. Give it some thought. It is worth it. And then change it. What is another story that you may be able to create? And be truthful. How enticing may you make it? Ah. Playfulness, my friends. Enjoy it. When you receive the responses that you want, pursue but always be mindful. Be mindful. You're not looking to harm any hearts. You're only looking to connect. So if you do need to retreat from a relationship, then please do it gracefully with as least little damage as you possibly can. So yes, for those of you who are single at this point, that is the advice I would give. Enjoy the year and enjoy learning about yourself. Andrew, can I ask you, for those that have been in waiting, would it be safe to say that 2016 would be a more optimum year for those to get with uh, get with uh, a romantic one or a loved one? Would the, are the chances better for them? Because that might be a question in their minds. You know, say, oh, I've been waiting all this time. Is is, is yes. it safe to say this would be more conducive this year than, say, any other year? If the interaction has already been established, for example, let us say the end of 2015, perhaps the last month of your time, you may have had some interaction where there is some mutual attraction. And I would say to you, yes, of course, take it into 2016. But also, heed my advice. Do not just throw yourself into something that feels wonderful. Treat it with respect. Treat the being with respect. This will obviously bring you the same in return if you're open to it. As far as increasing in 2016, the opportunity for 
those two unite who perhaps are single now, it neither gives them a greater chance or lesser one. It can go either way because what is happening, as I said, remember, the masculine will become more masculine and the feminine will become more feminine. So what is looked at as attractive will alter a little bit. Even within your individuals, you will find within yourselves your own balances of masculine and feminine. They will become stronger. They will manifest in different ways. But this does not mean that you do not take any responsibility for your own behaviours. You must, when you act with integrity and you have the intent of love, you must move forward, like I said, with that heart in your hands. So in 2016, my friends, the world, as you would say, is your oyster. If you cross paths with one who it appears that you may be able to form a relationship, I'm not saying that's not possible. I'm saying if you do and things are moving at a pace that suits you and suits the other person, you are both spending time. Use your gift of time. Then you define move forward. If you are just going to be playful, allow yourself to be playful. You do not need to feel lonely. You do not need to feel alone. You can have your needs met. This is fine. Whatever they may be, you can find them in all different places. They just may not all be within the one person. And that may be the ideal. So it may be something that will come to you after 2016. However, 2016 will prepare you for when that time comes. So if you are single in 2016, I recommend you be playful. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your interaction. Be flirtatious. Remember how to be flirtatious. Beings on the idea, moving on the journey of ascension, they tend to forget tend to forget to be playful. They tend to forget how to be flirtatious, especially as humans age. Please reawaken the youth in yourself. How to be young, attractive. How do you find another attractive? Express it. You can very well do this in 2016. You could do this every day in 2016 and imagine. Imagine the pleasure you would be giving. Think about that, but don't miss when the pleasure is sent back to you. That is for you. Is that helpful? That's very good. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we have a question from member Stephen. Stephen, are you uh, available for your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, Guru. Hello, Indu. Hello, Stephen. Much love to you. And you, my friend. Thank you. I was just wondering, uh, I've been getting in touch more with uh, my more of my multidimensional aspects and uh, just wondering if they have any messages for me at this time on my transformation into a fully conscious uh, being, uh, my gargoyle self or any, any. Thank you. Much love. Stephen, I would say to you, you know the answer to that. But I'm going to tell you why. Because you know what it is you're aiming for. It's very specific. It's specific to you. It is not something that you can look to others and get answers about. It's too easy, my friend. This is a journey. Whenever you are set challenges such as this, it is something that you need to discover on your way, yourself. I would tell you, you are perfectly in the exact place you need to be. You are moving toward the exact thing you want to. I know you are a focused being, Stephen. I know you are one of great and deep belief systems. 
and I also know you are one that relates very well to those who are close to you. I will bring you back to the relationship I dare. The relationship that you have with yourself and the idea of this growth. It's up to you. This one is on you, my friend. I will not give you the answer. With respect, I say that. This is your journey. Is there anything you. else? You're welcome. It's perfect. Thank you. Very good. And do what about people who may not necessarily be comfortable or not uh, interested in a romantic kind of uh, a love at this time or love relationship or romantic relationship? Do you have a suggestion for those people to uh, to spend their time that would be very fulfilling uh, for that idea? Absolutely, creativity anything that you create that brings you joy anything where you feel you are so indulged upon that you seem to lose time this is a way I would say to you to bring yourself that same pleasure it is actually a time where many of you are channeling when you are creating and this is why time appears to fly by. The creativity, whatever it may be, if you are not looking for a relationship, then have one with yourself. Have one with your creativity. Share your creativity. This is key in 2016. Share your creativity. Share your knowledge. Share whatever it is brings you the most joy. This is going to only amplify what comes back to you. Be open to what comes back to you. It will be amplified. Remember, amplified. 2016 is right here. Amplified. So please, yes. Spend time indulging in what you call your creative processes, your hobbies. No matter what it be, spiritual or otherwise, both are perfect. Is that helpful? That's very helpful. Uh, our friend Michelle has a question for you. Yes. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Michelle, hello. <laughs> How are you? I am well. Um, I was curious. <clears throat> I get this feeling hovering around my head sometimes that feels very nice. And I'm wondering if that's you. <laughs> friend, you know the answer to that. <laughs> Well, I don't, actually. I, I suspect I know the answer to that. Yes, Michelle. Okay. That is me. And um, I wanted to know, I have, um, I don't have recollections of spending time, but I do talk to you sometimes and ask that we go to the crystal healing yeah. rooms. So, have I been making good use of that? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Very much, my friend. Yeah. It's very cute. You are an absolute pleasure. <laughs> you are delightful in the crystal room. I'm Absolutely. glad you were enjoying the energy that I sent. Very I look much so. for our next visit, my friend. <laughs> That's excellent. So, what dimension are you guys in? <laughs> the sake of this example, I will tell you the fifth. Okay. So, it's very interesting because when I think of uh, having a relationship, I think of all the other stuff besides the romance. Like, romance is really nice, but 
I think of all the other things that go along with it, <laughs> and you're very into romance. So I don't think Fifth Dimension, maybe you guys don't interact in the same way 3D does. Um, and yeah. so, and that is why it is so appealing to me. I, on the other hand, just think of, oh, but they're going to want my time and energy. Uh, or, you know, whatever, different things. So it's a different perspective. But thank you. I wanted to say hello and thank you because I do really enjoy when I get to experience that energy. Yes, you're very so. welcome. Now. And please understand also that at, on the fifth dimension, as you move yourself to the fifth dimension, and you just express the idea to me that you feel ideas and needs will be asked of you. That may be the case, but please understand, it will be reciprocated. It will not be a one-way interaction. So it will be fulfilling for you. So please, just be aware of that. Mm. I'll try to stay open to the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You shall work on it, my friend. You shall work on it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Much love. Much love. And do slightly off topic, there's a question about um, who might be the first extraterrestrial race that will visit us. And I guess that means physically. Uh, yes. There's a question from, from the chat. So you have any information you can share on that? There are likelihoods. It is true initially that the probability was that it would be the AL. But it has been pointed out that there needs to be human input. So the idea of humanoid Palladians such as myself is also being considered. There are a couple of other species of goat fichnia that are being considered also. Oh, humanoid Palladians such as myself is also being considered. Oh, do we have a problem? It's covered now. Go ahead, please. Ah, thank you. Yes. Ah, I lost my train of thought. Where am I? <laughs> it was the in between the uh, uh, humanoid uh, types uh, being ah, considered. Thank you. Yes. What needs to happen is some more conversation about it, just amongst the humans. It doesn't need to be every single human on the planet, but it does need to be considered by humans who will be interactive with these beings. Now these. These beings who will be interactive will be one such as yourselves. The roles that you are practicing at the moment and which you believe you understand the way in which they will be used, I will tell you, my friends, you will be surprised because the intention of what it is you have learned, the intangibles as they are called, they'll be used for far different things. Really you could not imagine how those gifts will be used as a human at this point of time. However, the extent to which that is used will come down to how the humans perceive the visitation after first contact is made. It is one thing to focus on the idea of contact. And notice how it's called first contact. But what about second contact, third contact, fourth contact? Let us say you have you, you happen to live locally to a place where there is a ship landed and you have free reign. You may go there whenever you choose. And you're welcomed. What then? Humans need to talk about this. It is always taken into account that humans have free will, as do the aliens. There is also a complication of the governments, though they will be less intrusive. 
But what will happen is there will be rules and regulations that will be drawn up for both the aliens and the humans. Now this is going to come out of experience with the interactions that you have. Let us say, for example, the breed that comes needs to have a period of rest. Let us say typically it would be for approximately six of your hours every 72 of your hours. Now these beings may need to have a rest time. And you could relate it to your rest time that you have in your hospitals perhaps. So there would need to be rules and regulations drawn up around those ideas that in these particular times these places are not available to you and vice versa. Now, typically in the beginning also the probability is is that the aliens will not move far outside the realm of where it is they land their ships. That is something else to consider. Do you want these aliens to be walking amongst your population? Because if you do, then I would imagine you would prefer to have humanoid kinds arrive. It's very complex. It goes far beyond first contact, though. I understand everybody is excited. We are excited. It will all happen. But there needs to be further talk. There needs to be more issues addressed. What is going to happen after first contact? Does that answer the question? I believe that that will suffice there if they're not uh, live in the chat. But uh, we do have a question from here in the chat from Rainbow. Rainbow, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hello, Rainbow. Hi, Indu. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, you I was wondering. Name? Pardon? What a beautiful name. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I was wondering on what to expect in 2016. If you can like give us a heads heads up. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> thank you. With regard to anything in specific, or are you just talking in general? Um, in general, anything you think is important. Yes, as I said. 2016 is going to be likened to a ricochet idea. It, let us take one of your rubber bands. I see you. You wrap them around your fingers. You play with them. You use them to collect things together. They are stretchy. And many of you, especially the children, they play this game where they flick the band. Now, it builds energy here and then disperses. But it happens quickly. This is the analogy I would give you for 2016. This is how things, they will build, build, build. The building is happening now. Suddenly, the release of energy. This will happen on the level of everything. Your careers, your currency, your wars, your relationships. Even your births. So that is what I would say to you. It will be an event where you will have build up of energies and sudden releases. And that's why I've asked you to enroll the idea of being self reflective and self responsible and not do what would typically be a knee jerk reaction. To manage that year well, you need to have a certain amount of self-responsibility and integrity and care and love for others, for the glass heart that's in your hands. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, it makes me feel quite relieved because uh, for some reason recently I've been getting a bit nervous about 2016 because uh, I don't know if you know, but us humans tend to, you know, uh, put ideas out there like, oh, there's going to be loads of wars and stuff, you know, and I start to get really nervous about these things, so I'm really glad that you addressed this, and hopefully um, what you said helps out people that, are, um, that have the uh, same mindset as me. Thank you so much. Much love. Yeah, you're welcome, Rainbow. Much love, my dear friend. Thank you for the question. Yeah, no problem. 
Sarah, would you like to ask your questions? Yes, hello, Indu. How are you? Sarah, I'm well, thank you. How are you? Very good. I have my own question, but I believe a question from Stephen is still on this topic. So sure. if you don't mind, I'll ask that, and then I'll ask my question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, he asked, what about people like him who is already an alien? Would first contact be acknowledged that by proof of his lineage show that first contact has happened, but not publicly? And how many yeah. people are like him on Gaia half human? It would not be done publicly, you are correct. There is only a small percentage, about 3%. Mm -hmm. And will they be um, regarded as part of first contact? Or? Naturally, yes. If they are aware of the idea that they are hybrids, aliens, however they choose to reference themselves, if they have the awareness and they're comfortable with it, then yes, it can be recognized and will be recognized in the way that that particular being would be embraced. And I'm talking about physical and emotional embracement. It may not necessarily put them in a position of hierarchy. Hierarchy is something that is going to need to be dissipated when this happens. Hierarchy needs to be eliminated as much as possible before they come. So though they are honourable beings, and there is a percentage of them on the planet, there is no need to view them as being any greater or any less than any other. It may, it may well be acknowledged, but it will be acknowledged privately. Thank you for that. And my other question. Um, someone put up on the Hoopla website about the extra dimensional uh, beings from the sun and that they have been trying to connect with us, apparently. And there's some sort of conflict there. What's going on with solar flares and whatnot? What what is that? Mm. It is energetic exchange. When humans become aware of something, when they create themselves an idea, or they create themselves a species, or they give something a name, they label it. Now your son, where did the name for that come from? It is a word you made. It is sun. Now sun, your sun, is obviously very important to your planet. Obviously. It is the only way that you may live on this planet with your sun. Now the way in which your sun operates is just like any other planet in the multiverse. It's responsive. There is always reciprocal interactions. Now yes, there is talk of sun beings arriving on your planet and there are not many at this stage. It is almost a test run as you would call it. They are very passionate. They are strong. They come, alert, come over to humans as being dominant, perhaps a little overbearing. Now, I do not wish to have you view these beings in a negative way. I'm simply pointing out that this is the distinction, these are the differentiations that you may find between yourself and these beings. Now, if they're coming to Earth, you have invited them. You created them and you have invited them. Therefore, they have a, a purpose in several realities. A collective has been called upon. For some beings, some humans, they need to be interacted with on this level, this level of dominance, being told what to do, being told this is what's going to happen, being told to behave in this way, being told to believe this, that believe that. Okay, 
that's fine. Those of you who do not resonate with this kind of interaction, you simply will not be drawn toward them. You may cross paths. This will not be uncommon because they will very much be out there. But when you cross paths, you will simply do that. It will be a slight interaction and perhaps just as strongly they may not resonate with you for whatever reason. Respect each other and move on. Those that are open and do require deliverance from those kinds of beings, interactions, it's absolutely perfect. Does that answer your question? Um, sort of, but um, I was wondering more about their interaction with Earth itself and more about why do they wish to connect with us at this time or like, I don't know, it's like something about the idea of their conflict on their sun is affecting us on Earth. So I'm trying yes. to understand that concept. Yes. As I said, because it is a reflection, there was a need identified. There was a connection made and suddenly it, became, it came into the awareness of the humans and into the awareness of some beings. So they were created and they joined. Now the purpose, the purpose for that is only known to those who wished for it, who created it. Now I can say to you, yes, your son has solar flares. But now that you have some beings on the earth, why would you think your planet would respond differently to your traditional solar flares from your son? It's not actually the energies that will be any different as they interact amongst, amongst your planets. What will be different is the energy that's transferred between the beings as they move upon Earth. Now it is very likely, highly probable, they will not remain on Earth very long at all. This is not something that people need to be concerned about. It's simply that there was a purpose for them to be amongst you. They are not making cha vast changes on your earth. They are not stimulating your sun in any way, shape or form to affect your earth at all. It is simply just as it is with any other species, any other being. It's interactions that need to happen in certain ways. So please make that distinction, Sarah. Do not give the idea of energy moving around the planet. We watch this. We deliver energy to Gaia. We see this. Many humans create the idea of these magnetic fields. They create the idea that there are these external influences coming from all kinds of places. Now I'm not saying for one moment that they are what you would call lying. No, of course not. This is their belief. It is their truth. But for as long as you believe external forces can influence you so greatly that you fear them or that you mismanage them, you will have that experience. My friend, whenever there is planetary movement anywhere in the multiverse, of course it generates energy. Of course it's something that, yes, yeah, so you might enjoy being aware of. But please understand, much of it you have lived through. Much of it you have repeatedly lived through. You only have infrequent occurrences that happen perhaps in one, one lifetime and they are very powerful. But they are only as powerful as what you give them. So your perception is as important 
It's what you are, the belief system you are creating around what you are being told. Now I take you back to the idea of reflection. If you have mastered past energy influxes, past, past solar flares, past planetary movement in the multiverse, let me tell you something my friends, galaxies away affect your planet. It's not something that you should be worrying yourselves about. The reason you chose to come to Earth is to master these. It doesn't serve you to have predictions. It serves you to be in line with yourself and your own vibrations and understand the frequencies, understand the lessons, look at the effects that are going on around you. It's not unlike a teacher, a teacher in a classroom who stands at the head of the room, gives instruction. The children believe that this is what they must do so they rally around and they do it because one person told them to. One person they looked up to, one person they respected, of course. This is emulated so many times. It has complicated so much for the humans. You are evolving, yes. You are intelligent, yes. Be intelligent enough to know that you can manage yourselves no matter what is going on. Master yourselves. That is why you are here. Not mastering all the other energies going on in the universe and bothering yourself about all the complications. Okay, thank you. I was more just trying to understand the dynamics of how it, either they're working with us or part of us. I wasn't looking into the good or the bad, more like mm. what is their interaction. Mm. With the their interaction is, is simply, as I said, is simply beings that who move amongst all of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have specific personality traits, but they appear just the same. Mm -hmm. Very well. Thank you. I'll You're pass welcome. the mic. Hello, Indu. How are you? Indu, sure. Ah. Hello. Nice the way you said my name, my friend, I recognize you. Ah. Mm. How are you? How are you? I am very well. How are you? I'm very well. A bit tired, but that's okay. Ah. Um, I want to ask you about my channeling. Lately, I start to channel, and actually, I'm getting pretty good at it. I'm only doing it for like two months, and I'm getting mm -hmm. very, I'm very pleased with the results. Only, uh, I don't feel that any the beans that comes are not fully in, and sometimes uh, specific knowledge or like when it comes to numbers or a uh, certain information, like uh, my mind, my mind is getting involved. So I was wondering if you have like an advice or something? Yes. There is a technique. There is a certain technique that perhaps will help you if I describe it. With the inhaling process, as you open the host up and you allow a channel to enter and come through, this is a circular motion. Now, I feel this is an understanding that may serve you. As you breathe in, you are bringing in the energy of another entity. As you breathe out, as you exhale, you are exhaling yourself. You are inhaling more of the energy and you are exhaling yourself. Now please understand, the li there are limitations. You still need to allow the energy that comes in to learn, to learn how to use your body. 
to learn how your mouth, your vocal cords, your hands, your expressions, to learn how to move them around, to learn how to be expressive, to become comfortable. It is a learning process for them as much as it is for you. Mm -hmm. Now I will say with you my friend, I myself had difficulty in the beginning until my host was understood and told that I wish to enter via the throat chakra. It was my chosen way for this particular vibration that I was choosing to use. So once we understood that, things went very smoothly. And this is one reason why when channelers start out and they are doing wonderfully with their practice, there's many other elements that can affect the situation. And where perhaps the element is not readily recognized, it may be called what is named a block. I would simply just like to share with you all when this happens, because I know many of you wish to be channelers. When this happens, if you are ever told that you have a block, it's not with disrespect that you take that on, but it is with the understanding that a block is not a permanent. A block, the idea of a block, can be something that is very easily repaired. It is an alteration. That is all. A block gives the idea of it's something big, it's something heavy, and it's difficult to change. But if you understand that it is something as simple as this being needs to enter through your throat chakra, your problem, your block, it no longer exists. It does not need to be that complicated. I see. So simply ask the being how uh, it prefers to be channeled and also um, practicing more and more the same being so it will be easier for the being to recognize the body yeah. and the system. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. They choose you as much as you choose them, my friend. <laughs> nice. Actually, taught the... Um, um, the Egyptian god came to me a couple of days ago and Ra as well, so I was very yeah. honored by that. Yes, congratulations, sir. Thank you. And also, do you have anything to tell me about 2016, something that might be relevant to me? Any messages that want to get through to me? <laughs> Yes, my friend. You have your rubber band at poise. <laughs> you just explained to me why. Your channeling is going to go <laughs> like that. Simple. So I'd say to you, in those moments when you have that momentum, you have that build up. With channeling, you do need to have a kind of balance going on. I know you understand this. Yeah. So when you come to your channel, if you feel you do have a build-up of energy, please do your best to disperse it at first. Disperse your own energy. Rid yourself of your restlessness, for example. Mm -hmm. Do that. Then you can come to a moment of perhaps where you have less projection stored in this rubber band. So it may perhaps be just a slight click then, nice and easy for you and the vibration to come in and then have a level conversation, interaction, whatever it is you're doing. Okay. But that's where your acceleration will come. It's with your channeling. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, my friend. <laughs> Are you there? Are you ready? And yes, thank you. Hello, Indu. Hello. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. Um, I uh, have a really uh, trouble to meditate and focus my uh, thoughts. Um, can you uh, help me with that? 
Yes. How are you attempting to do this? How are you trying to meditate? Yes. How are you trying to meditate? Okay, um, what is the process? I'm uh, usually doing it in the, in bed. I'm laying down on my back, uh, closing my eyes, and just trying to um, breathe, focus on breathing, and be quiet. Yes, understood. Do you use any guided meditation ideas or not? No, no. Mm -hmm. I'm not judging. That is fine. It's very individual amongst the humans. Sometimes they prefer it and sometimes they don't. Now I'm going to tell you one particular thing. When you are laying there in your bed, please be aware that you have your palms faced upwards. It is habit for humans when they lay down on the backs, as you just suggested, to lay with their palms down. This effectively actually blocks the circuitry. So if you turn them upwards, it can be that simple. You're more receptive. You're not blocking the circuit. Another thing, the positioning of your feet. It must be comfortable, yes. But if you can have them in a way per where perhaps even the ankles meet, just one part of the toes, something that is comfortable, but something that will maintain the circuit through your, your whole body, then you are connected. You have a full circle going around. Then, I will ask you to ask your spirit realm to bring you a chakra balance. Now, if you know how to do this yourself, wonderful. If anybody else does, wonderful. If not, call for help from your spirit realm. It will happen quickly. You do not need to wait too long, but you will find your response will be the inhalation. You will take a big breath and exhale. This will be the moment when you are starting to prepare to go into the trance. This will be the moment where the chakras are balanced, the circuitry is open, and you are moving and flowing freely. Then all that is left to happen is for you to use your breath and shift. Allow the pounds up, and you will come. Third eye will open, and you will be taken on a wonderful journey whatever it is your intent. So please, attempt that technique. Yeah, um, I will try it, sure. Thank you very much. Um, I have a, another question, a little question. Um, yes. About food, about food and the right kind for me. Um, I will try different things and I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm going in circles about that. There's, there's some uh, food that better for me? There are foods at different periods of your lives that are important to you. There is not specifically one food that you should eat throughout your lifetime for any particular reason. It changes. It changes in the same way that your vibration does. In the same way that you evolve, you grow. You come from childhood, you grow to an adult. Your needs are completely different. Your dietitians understand this to a degree. They recommend everything in what you would call balance. You have your food pyramids. Oh yes, we have seen those. My friend, the best thing that you can do is follow what your body is craving. And another idea I'd like to reflect, the foods, the colours, the shapes, the sizes, they very often are relevant to the parts of the body that need addressing with some kind of nutrition. So keep that in mind also. If you are drawn to something Now I'll give you an example of an eggplant. 
interesting vegetables. If you take the eggplant, you decide that you wish to eat eggplant, that is going to actually have an effect on your pancreas and part of your heart. Because if you were to open your body up and look at it vibrationally, that is what you would see. You would see something that dense in that shade in the spectrum if you were able to see it. So that is why it's, it, it is very interesting that you are even asking this question. I thank you for asking it, my friend. But that is why humans have cravings. They have cravings for a reason. And the perfect example is the cravings that a pregnant human female gets. There is no reason why males shouldn't have them either just because they don't fall pregnant. So in your case, I would say when you wake in the morning and if there's something that your body is craving, then please go ahead and have it. Alternatively, if you are not having cravings, just make sure you are having a balanced diet. Do not overeat. Do not undereat. Make sure that you are grateful for your food. And be kind to your body as you digest it. Do it slowly. There's no rush. Where you can, sit down, take your time and eat your meal and enjoy it. Is that helpful? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Last question. Right. Last question. Um, uh, do I have some message or something you can tell me about that from the spirit guys? I'm happy. Mm. Yes. Please continue on the path that you are on. Your spirit guides are actually, they're very active at the moment around you. They're very happy. They are excited. You have moved, you moved over. You shifted yourself from a place where you were to a place where you're meant to be, where they were meant to guide you to be. So they are very excited that you've acknowledged that and you have moved there and you are ready now. You are ready now in unison, all of you, ready now to take the next big step. So please stay on the path of where you're at. Do not make any drastic changes. And simply move forward. And I am telling you this because it is relevant up until September 2016 for you. After that, there may be a little more space for you to move around either way. But please just be mindful. Your growth is going along very well and they are very happy and, and they are enjoying it. And they know that you are too. So please continue on the journey that you are on with your self-discovery and your self-learning. That would be the message. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Greetings, Andy. Really? Yes, indeed. Um, just want to check in on Kim. And yes. Also, just to show my uh, love and express the gratitude for you being here today. Um, thank you very much for taking this time to come to us today. It means a really lot to us. Um, just want to check in on Kim, make sure she's okay with fluids. Thank you. So, if you want to break trance or. Uh, yes, I'll just take seconds. Now, I have a I question or two, and then I think. Sarah has, uh, Angela, Johannes, and then Sarah has one after me. Okay. Certainly. One moment.
<laughs> yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I've got a question from uh, Luca again on the chat, and I've also got a question from myself. So I'll put Luca first. Um, he wants to ask you about if there was any more practical ways for opening up psychic centers. Obviously, to be able to channel more, perceive things in other dimensions. He's asking for any such specific meditations for the third eye. Is yes. There anything you could recommend? Yes. Yes. Please, Luca. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not only use the activation of your third eye, please also involve your crown chakra. Psychic messages can come from many areas. Often they may even come from a telepathic feeling. Now, with psychic interaction, typically what happens with humans is that they are shown visuals. They'll be shown some kind of, sometimes it appears as what you might call a photo, uh, it might be a, a still interaction or it could be an interaction such as a teacher in a classroom. There will be an element of you needing to decipher these. They, they will become a pattern. They will become almost a language that you have between yourself and wherever the psychic messages come from. So it's not like a dialogue that comes directly to you. It's actually more uh, putting together clues and you will become familiar, very familiar. And so will those beings who are communicating with you in what to send you, what pictures to show you. What, you, what, what to assist you in seeing and then to translate that into the, into the psychic deliverance. Many humans think that psychic ideas are actually conversations that go along in their heads. Of course there are times when there are conversations but these are not psychic. They are more of a subconscious channeling nature. A psychic idea is very different. That mediumship, again, is a, another form that does not involve strictly psychic connection. So if psychic connection is what he is looking for, then yes, look for the pattern in the pictures that he will be sent through both his crown chakra and his third eye. Is that helpful? Yeah, it was a question through chat, so that was that was very helpful indeed for you to expand and explain upon that. Um, thank you very much. Um, I personally don't want any 2016 spoilers. Um, I'm happy for me to know and venture into 2016 knowing that I will be doing so many things anyway, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But I want to know what you're going to be doing. I want to know what your <laughs> plans are for 2016. I want to be At noticing. Yes, at, at the moment, my friend, we are in discussions. There is talk about some species leaving. There is talk about new ones coming in. Gofitnir is still processing applications. There are still species who are looking to become involved in the colonies. Now, this is all being considered, just as I shared with you earlier, in reflection. Now, at the moment, the probability is that we may bring in another of our ships. There are already two of us here. We are large ships and we are designed not to move quickly around the planet. We are not ones that are sighted very often. There's about 3,000 of us on my ship at this point. We are the second ship. Now, the third ship. It will come in and it is of a different design, although it will have a similar purpose. That's just one example. Now we will also be delving further into the core of the Earth, into the core of Gaia. We'll be working with the AL and the energy grid. We'll be working with temperature. We will be working with the tragedies, the disasters, acts of God as you put them. 
to do the best that we can to minimise anything that may put humans off course with their ascension. Fear does not make a great position to come from when you are looking to grow. If you are in fear of the idea that there is an impending disaster going to happen, you are not going to look at that and be objective and then say to yourself, well, it doesn't matter because it does. It affects you. You're a three-dimensional human. All needs and basic needs for the human need to be met before they can look towards ascension and one of those is safety. So we take this very seriously. And so we come in and we, can, we cannot save the humans from, it, from themselves. We cannot do that, but we can minimise the fallout. We can minimise the damage. And we do, we have, and we will. For 2016, there will be likely, as I said, another of my ships come in, but there are two others two other species that may leave for a period, but they will be on what you would call hold, high alert. If they are needed to return quickly, they will. Now, there's also others, as I said, who are making applications. Now, as all this is going on, reflection is taking place. History is being looked upon and also is likelihood of what is to happen in the planet's Earth's future in the next 2016. We're using our own scientific methods and extra scientific methods to support Earth and to see what potentially is coming and be prepared for that. Now in amongst there, there has been talk also of first contact we have heard about this. We have heard there is discussion. We do not know if, when, where or how. It has not been decided. So at this point in time, that is what we will be doing. I will still be here with awesome. my counterparts, Melita Rowey. Melita will mm -hmm. still be here. Yes. So those of you who I visit frequently, I will still be around for as long as you want me to be. There is no need for me to return back at this point. That's good to hear. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, we've got about another 25 minutes left, and we've got quite a few questions. So we've got questions from Angela, Johannes, Sarah Rainbow, and Michelle, and Guru Dan. So, yeah. um, we'll let you, Angela go first since she hasn't um, asked a question yet. Certainly. Angela, you there? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. Hi, Angela. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I my question is, um, whether I need to pursue Reiki or not. Um, all of, um, I've been receiving Reiki for about the last year, and um, I know that it's very beneficial. I did have exp an experience um, a couple weeks ago where um, we were just running our hands over another person's back, and the person said that they actually felt my energy. So, you know, I didn't like have the, you know, the drive yet to do Reiki, but I'm wondering if that is where coming into my path. Yes. It's there. It's right in front of you. Please take advantage of the galactic idea of Reiki that Hugo was sharing. Okay. You are aware of that, yes? Um, I, I believe the answer to that is yes. Yes. It will be easy for you to find. Please just ask another member. They will help you. Uh, and this will be very supportive for you. Very supportive for you. Okay. Yes. Um, my other question is um, in regards to um, a new species that has like come into our area. Um, it's not yet, um, he's not really uh, uh, known yet, but he comes into our space through a wormhole. Are you aware of this person? 
I have heard stories. Would you like to share more? Would you like me to share more? I would like you to share a little bit more. We have heard that there is a being that's moving in from another dimension, yes. And because there is only one, there's not much concern about it at the moment. It's fine. It's actually as much interest to us as it is to you. It is true. I'm very interested. Yes. And so are we. So we are not, we are, we know no more than you do. Okay. It's something we will watch with interest as well, yes. Okay. That was all. Thank you very much. Much love to you. Much love, my friend. Wonderful. Um, right, okay. We're going to speed things up a little bit, Andrew, if that's okay with you as well. Um, yes. We've got Johannes, Sarah, Rainbow, and Michelle. Um, next half an hour, so we'll start with uh, Johannes. He was next on the list. Yes. Hello. Hello, Indu. Hello, Johannes. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are your pizzas? Uh, as never before. Ah, very good. I hope you're still making your alien ones. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well done. How can I help you? Uh, if there are any suggestions throughout my path today, our path, me and Martina is laying here on the couch. So if there's any messages for us. Yes. Lay down on the couch, my friend. You've gone to such great lengths to create yourself some relief from your workload. So I would say to you two things. Please make the most of having effectively leveraged your workload and also make the most of the relationships of those closest to you during these periods when you are taking a break. Now it can be very difficult for a human who has worked so hard at something for so long and they have so much love invested in what it is they have been doing. It's very difficult for them to let go. It's not unlike the wonderful to curve. But my friend, first as the humans get used to the idea of having time, they find that they've forgotten how to spend it. So I would say to you, of course, take your times alone. But please nurture the relationships that are around you. Look to those. Bring some happiness to those. Bring some joy to those. Celebrate. This is what I would recommend for you, Johannes. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much. Much love. Much love. Hello, Andrew. It's Sarah again. Much love. Oh, Sarah, hello. Yes, I was wondering about a thing that happened uh, to me. I saw a rainbow in the night sky for a quick flash. And then I had an idea of me transforming into a gorilla. So <laughs> I'm I like what is going on? <laughs> oh my goodness. The rainbow obviously, uh, particularly the rainbow at night time. This is very special. This is reflective of very special events you have just experienced and also because you saw the rainbow both sides, correct? You saw the full it, it rainbow? It was a flash. It was a flash and yeah, it was in the okay. night sky. That's okay. But uh, did you see the full rainbow? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, let us assume you did. What I am seeing is that you did. Okay. So the fact that it was a full rainbow, it's addressing near, near past and near future. So you've had these amazing experiences and you are still to have more coming. Okay. Now, the gorilla idea, that is a clue. I will not tell you exactly what it is a clue about, but it is a clue 
as to what the next big step you are going to take will be. Interesting. Humans are wonderful. Interesting dream. No, it wasn't a dream. I was totally just Oh, awake. you saw it? Yes, yes. Same. <laughs> I was totally awake in the car. Yeah. yeah. Same day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very amusing, Sarah. I love humans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. I just wanted to ask about that because I thought that was different. Yes. You did get a hint, though, so that was nice. I, mm, yeah. I got it. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not meant to at the moment. If you see another one, though, see if they'll show you a second time. Okay. Tell them okay. they have to be a bit more clear next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's just an indicator of a choice you have coming up, a probability, a magical one, nothing to worry about. Very well, thank you. And do my um, spirit guides have any messages just now? Yes. Yes. You need to settle for a period. You need to spend some time looking after yourself, particularly your body. I will not say much more publicly, but I will get this message to you later. Very well. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you too. Who was next, right? No, trying to find my list. Where is my list? Right. Oh my Rainbow. goodness. Of course, Rainbow. Hi, I'm back again. <laughs> Hello. Um, hi. Um, well, I was wondering about a being that I've been told about uh, named Unaha'a and also, Una yeah, Una and, Una yes, yes, um, and also another being that I'm not too sure about um, named Unasaka and I'm not sure if I've made this being up in my head because uh, what I tend to do is I make up uh, conversations like many other people do, but you know, it seems so fluent. It seems like I'm actually talking to another being. I was wondering if you could tell me if the second being was real and also a bit about the first being. Thank you. Yes, my friend. Straight, straight away. Straight away. As soon as you said those words, Arcturian. That is Arcturian language, they are Arcturian beings. Are you familiar uh, with the Arcturians? Pardon? Are you familiar with the Arcturians? Yes, I am. Uh, yeah. Uh, someone told me I had a really strong connection to the Arcturian energies. I was wondering if you could just tell me a bit of information about them because other people have questions. So. Do you mean about these beings in particular? Yes, those two beings. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're very close to you. They're actually beings that you have incarnated with in other lifetimes. And this is one, more, one reason why you so easily identify them, where they are able to reach you in your psyche and you are able to have this very liberal, easy-flowing language. It's coming to you very easily. And it is because you have had past life experience with these beings and of course you also have had alien past lives and five of those were Arcturian. Ah, uh, okay oh. then. Thank you. Thank you. You're Uh, Michelle? Uh, Michelle? Thanks, Rui. Thanks, Rui. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Um, um, I was wondering if you could give me some information, or actually, 
I've been trying to make a conscious connection to my higher self and my guides, and I'm not really, I do what I know to do, which is meditate and just whatever, but um, I'm not getting, I, I wonder if they have a message that you could pass on to me because I'm not feeling like I'm mm. receiving mm. information or I'm not paying attention closely enough, I'm not really sure. Yeah. It's not necessarily the, necessarily that you're not paying enough attention. It's just that there is distraction. You actually have movement around you. You have emotional movement around you. This is changing your vibration and your frequency. Please just accept this period for what it is. Mm -hmm. It is change. Mm -hmm. As you settle and you just become much more of what you would call, you feel more like yourself again. Mm -hmm. Then attempt again to communicate with your spirit guides, your higher self. Now, you know that you may get reply, verbal reply, mm -hmm. but also the universe will also give you indicators of communication from your spirit realm as well. They may be gentle ones. They may come as small synchronicities, these ideas, depending on what it is you ask them. If you give them something that's very specific that they may show to you in a certain way and give you affirmation, then this is the way in which you are being shown to communicate with your spirit realm. Now this can take four, five, six, seven ideas. It depends on you and your relationship with the spirit realm. It also depends on whether your higher self is prepared to identify themselves. We all have this problem, Michelle. May I share this with you? All incarnate life mm -hmm. with our spirit realm we are curious about our own as well. Okay. There's much we have to learn ourselves about our spirit realm also. So yes, I can relate to the experience that you're having. But please, don't be discouraged. Okay. Just understand that the timing needs to be appropriate. So I've had a couple of things, like I've seen stars dancing. <laughs> Right then, I thought they were stars anyway. Sarah mentioned they might be ships, um, and I saw a gray out of the corner of my eye. I would. Mm. Can you confirm that, or yes. can you tap into that? Okay, I just wanted to double check. Um, so these kinds of things are these from my guides, or is this just the universe in general? At the moment, it's the universe in general. Okay. It's just the universe just giving you a little tap, a little reminder. Okay. Just give you a little touch of magic. Thank you. While you deal with the 3D stuff that's going on at the moment. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Noha. Noha just entered the room, and I know she has a question for you, Endu, so I'm going to let Noha go next if she has her mic working. Noha, are you working? Okay, maybe she's not working. Oh, there she goes. Hello, everybody. Hello, Alma Talk. I want to congratulate you guys for a happy Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, of course. Hi, Noha. Um, Noha, yeah, you've got a little bit of interference. Let me just play with your microphone a little bit. Um, I raised the Turn you up a little bit. Um, today, um, Kim is channeling Endu. Endu, right. Endu. Endu is a Palladian. Palladian, how nice. Wait, okay, I got a question for Palladian. Hello, my dear Endu. My guides are Palladians. Could you confirm that about it? Because I was surprised. All of them, the three, and I've got the names also. Uh, Monique, Rebecca, and Kevin. How come, how come they're all Palladian, you know? So surprised and with my link with them, so, so surprised, you know, about that. Yes. May I explain something to you, my friend? Yes. With your spirit realm, the way they will identify themselves to you is the most recent incarnation that you had with them. So spirit does not have mass. It does not have form. So when it comes to humans and the idea of them being relatable to their guides, they like to give them names, as you do. They like to know, 
their species in this case obviously you've been told they're Palladian but what they're doing is they're projecting to you the way that you knew them when you were interacting with them in a lifetime. So you have obviously been Palladian and these beings play a huge part in your spiritual growth. So when you decided to come into the incarnation on planet Earth, you already had decided that these beings would be your spirit guides. And as you were reaching out to them and you were asking questions, then they are saying to you, well, this is how you knew us last. This is what we look like. This is who we are because this is how we interacted the last time we saw you. And they the were in the last life, past lives. And this is where, in my last past life that I was trying to say. I was a Pleiadian in my last past life, right? Yes, yes, yes. The yes. most recent one. Okay. Yes, Wait, mm. this is news. I didn't know about that. Okay, great. Yes. Great. Do you have any messages for me, for my guides, please? I'm sorry, repeat. Do you have any messages for me, for my guides? Because I want to communicate with them and I'll tell them in every meditation, I need to communicate to the guides and my higher self. I always preach that in my meditation, you know? Just one moment. Yes, please. No hard. Do you, do you practice galactic languages? I do speak, yeah. I do speak, but not uh, Pleiadian rather. Um, they told me it's earthly, you know, like a, a kind of a like a birdie language, a clicking language, things like that. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I know the word. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I would say to you, however, even though there is some relevance with that. I would say to you to pick up some Palladium. Make an effort to pick up just some basic, basic symbol, uh, syllables. Set the intent and then speak the language. But please spend some time learning some of the Palladium and communicating in, in Palladium. Now this is going to open up a frequency for you. Like I've, like you've all been told before, you move, you shift, your frequencies change. So does your spirit realm. Now, if you can change your frequency more in line with your spirit realm, then that you're actually moving closer. It's like a magnet. You're moving closer, so the interaction with them is more likely to happen because you're becoming more relatable, you're on the same frequency. Please always bring yourself back. Please always be mindful. The place for you to be is neutral, grounded. It's okay to go and spend some time in that five dimensional realm with the Palladians and have a conversation with them, but please come back. Know they are there whenever you need them, come back. The three-dimensional world will always need to be addressed. That's why you are here. As far as messages at this point in time, they do not have any for you. But they do wish for you to learn some Palladian, and this will help with the communications. Yes, yes. Actually, Whenever... I will rephrase that. No, I will rephrase that. Okay. Remember. Remember the language. I will take away... Go and learn it, and I will say say to you, remember it. Actually, I've heard um, Brian speak it. When he does, it just like rings like a harp. You know, when he, once I heard it in his webinars, my God, it blew my mind. It's like a harp, you know, being played on the spot. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I got static now, and I got chills in my hands uh, all over me. <laughs> my goodness, it's beautiful. Really. It's like, you know, talking about myself. Yes. True. I'm very happy for you, my friend. Yes. You are adorable and I love you so much. You and Kim and everybody around you. Happy Merry Christmas, you guys. Love you so thank much. You. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Much love, Noah. Merry love Christmas. Bye-bye. Endu, I just have a couple of questions just to uh, um, round things up a little bit. One was uh, from uh, the viewer Simon, 
he says, hello, Endu. Before the Earth goes through first contact, would it, be, would it be better to just have first contacts with people like ourselves so we can <laughs> teach and help others understand and adapt better when the major first contacts happen? Lots of love to you, Endu. Thank you. So that was from Simon. From Simon. If Simon's listening, hello, Simon. Um, this idea has actually been discussed. It has actually been carried out in your history eons ago, was successful several times, different species in different ways, different parts of your world. It has been successful. So the idea, the fact that that idea would come to him is not unusual because he's probably experienced this, this at some point. But it has been discussed. There are limitations because of the agreements with the government. There is also the idea that doing things incognito is not necessarily helpful to the humans because if something was to go awry, and though we are making the best efforts that we can, if something was to go awry and the human needed to seek out help and we were now not permitted to intervene with that assistance, for example, something medical went wrong and they went to their hospital and there was something unexplainable that happened. And then perhaps there were several of these things occurring. So if this contact idea was happening individually and in secret, it has its risks that go with it. So yes, it's a reasonable idea, but practically it's not necessarily something where we can troubleshoot all the potential problems. Does that make sense? It does. Um... Thank you for that. Uh, I need to ask for a little clarity. When you were speaking about um, some of the people who were needed the information in a dominant sort of way. For some was, people. Yeah, for some people. It was only a description for only some people. But then a question arose from Alex that, that, that asks, so do we have to only communicate to the energy how we would like to do this and the specifics of our body or there is another way to teach the energy the specifics of our body so it can get through so I think Alex is wondering what he needs to do in order to just uh, experience slash allow the the contact kind of information idea it's quite simple Humans may interact with them just as they would with another human on the planet that is a, a dominant, an alpha being, an, an overbearing being, a dictator, someone who's passionate, they are fiery, they're confrontational. Obviously these are the negatives that I'm pointing out. The problem with this is, is that this is what makes them differentiable. This is the only way you can set them apart from the humans because they are far more extreme in these areas. And anybody may meet them at any time. The fact that this request has been made is very likely that it will happen. They're not here to teach and they're not here to learn. They're just here. So if Alex chooses makes a request, says they, would, says they would like to have an interaction with a sun being, which is what they're obviously being dubbed as, then that may very well happen. It will be identified by these characteristics that I'm explaining to you now. now they obviously have wonderful characteristics of their own. But these are the ones that humans will notice the most to differentiate them. Communication is possible very much so, but they are likely to want to change you, and that is up to you. Does that answer the question? I, I think it may. He'll have to um, <clears throat> run it through his uh, his filters and see how that is to him. He may uh, have an opportunity to approach you maybe at a private level if he needs but more clarity yes. on that. Um, just personally, then, for myself, do you have uh, any uh, anything you'd like to share with me? Just here, right at the uh, the last bit. 
that? Have you watered the cactus? I did, actually, and I'm going to do it again here soon. And did you feed it? I did, with the Very special good. thing that was told for me to feed it with. Very good. Well done. Please continue until she returns. All righty. Excellent. Also, uh, I just remembered our our other friend member, Danny, over in the Netherlands, wants to know if there's anything for him as well. Ah. Ah, Danny, yes. Oh, may I send him blessings? Certainly. Yes, we see that he he has done much work for the members of the group. He, he has spent much time and effort in what he does. He's meticulous. He's very good with detail. Ah, oh, yes. We, we would like to give him great thanks and blessings for all that he does. Please, please let him know that we acknowledge it, we see it, we know it. I will make sure he gets that message. Thank you. And that was all that I have for just right now. Uh, Andrew, would you mind uh, maybe a little blessing from uh, from your side? And then we can wrap up. Uh, Sarah was going to help us with the blessing here as well. But could you uh, could you offer us a little something from there? Yes, I would just like to remind you all, as you move through 2016, keep a rubber band somewhere that you shall often look at it. This is a gesture that you offer yourself to bring yourself peace through times where you may feel that you have been catapulted through a part of your life. You can master it. You will master it. And you will come out the other end with amazing grace. So I wish you all the wonderment that is to come. I wish you the truth and the knowing of yourselves. And I wish you the greatness and that you all know how perfect you all are and how much you are loved. That is my message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew, for coming and sharing with all of us all the uh, the words and wisdoms and clarity. Thank you so much for coming. You're very welcome, Dan. I shall leave now. Okay, and then um, when uh, when Kim comes back, we'll uh, we'll do our closing blessing from here. Then. Very good. Thank you, Andy. Um, just while Kim's coming back into the room, I just would like to do a quick announcement. Um, Kim is um, giving away a free session to a lucky member for Christmas. So we thought it would be a nice idea for people to. Um, be able to interact who normally can't. So if anybody is wishing for a, um, Kim is going to give away a free 45 minute session uh, to anybody. All you have to do is basically just send her an email. Just send her an email with a name of your favorite channel that she channels, either Alma Talk, Endu, uh, Kalia, Shambhala, any any of the beings, it's all on the Human Colony page. So um, if you have anything to add to that, um, just send an email to, what's the email address for you again, honey? It's multiverse dot channeling at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's multiverse dot channeling at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. So just put that in the subject line. If everyone just puts that, so this is an announcement to everybody on YouTube, everybody who listens to this in the next week or so, um, and then we just do like a random email draw, uh, like a, an online lottery randomizer, and we just pick one email from the hat and then get in touch and you have a free 45-minute session. Mm -hmm. So happy Christmas, one and all. Yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, before... Uh, 
Sarah does some galactic language blessing. I just want to say, because this is our last webinar of 2015, thank you so much for everything in the last mm -hmm. year. Kim, yourself, Jim, Max, Roxy, Dan, Will, Sarah, Rainbow, Pavel, Michelle, and everybody, all of you, you know, you've been amazing this year and what you've done and what you've achieved. And I just want to express my love and gratitude for everything. And I look forward to you all making 2016 a beautiful, beautiful time. So without further ado, um, Dan, do you have any announcements, anything you want to say? Not right off the top of my head. Uh, I, too, would just like to uh, say thank you for everybody for a great Hukulo year. It's been wonderful. Lots of expansion, really. What a great word expansion is. Yes, and uh, oh, yes. I hope everybody has an awesome new year. And um, no, that's just all I have for right now. Just whenever Sarah is ready here. Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas to all. Tarantie se koloto isukoto ni hayasha niashoto karantukunu hasukoto ha tia sokorona hasharana. Kiyasuko, Ashukutu ha siki, Nayas, Enekeo, Ha nuku, Isikiyasho, Shantiya siya, Ushinekiya, Onoko, Histeya ha, Kuruntunka, Isikiyoto ha. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And if there's nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and close. So thank you, everybody, for a great webinar. Have a great 2016. See you all next year.